Hello everyone. Today we're going to have the first episode of what I will call the back shops. And this is where I show you ways that I either fix or upgrade train cars or engines. I'm not going to show you anything new or amazing. I'm just going to show you what I do and maybe I'll help you out. So I'm getting ready to do a uh, Christmas video for the channel. And I was looking at my uh, small collection of Christmas cars. And all of them have metal wheels except for three of them. And they were from the North Pole and Southern set from Bachman. And I upgraded them all with KD number 148 couplers. That's the ones that have little whisker springs in them. And I've also just got done upgrading this one with metal wheels. And I like uh, Walter's metal wheels with metal axles they have some really nice weight to them so it adds weight to the car and uh you know as pretty much everyone knows metal wheels roll so much nicer but before you can put metal wheels on these you have to fix the trucks they're uh made for a smaller end on the bachman wheels and when you put in the metal wheels they won't spin very well so that's why I highly recommend from Micromark you can find them online a little tool here it's called the truck tuner and it's $22.95 I believe which seems like a lot for such a small little tool but this will save you so many headaches and I'm gonna show you so I have my caboose here and we're going to want to take the trucks off. It'll just make life easier. So a little small Phillips. Remove the truck. Don't lose the screw. And these are plastic wheels. So we just pop them out. No big deal. But we need the hole. And you'll be able to see it very well in this. To be slightly larger inside the truck for the metal wheel axle to spin freely. So that's where this comes into play. So you just simply put the non-cutting end in one hole and then the cutting end in the other. And I put a little pressure, just squeeze down a little bit and you spin it, you know, give it five or six turns, maybe 10 actually, and you're done. And you can see there's a little bit of plastic shavings in the cutting edge. I'm gonna clean that out. And what that did is it cupped the inside of the truck and made it a little bigger to accept more modern, up-to-date metal wheels. So we put it on the other side. Turn, turn, turn. And you get a little bit of plastic residue. And one thing you really want to make sure is, what I do is just take these and <laughs> blow out to make sure you have no shavings inside the truck. Otherwise, when you put the new wheel in, it won't spin very well. And you wonder what went wrong. So we'll go and do the other side. A few spins. Get off the shavings. Turn it around. Okay, spin, spin, spin. Once again, you can see there's a little bit of shavings. It doesn't take a whole lot out, and it makes a world of difference. And let's see, make sure we don't have any thing left. And then we insert our new wheels. And they should spin nice and free. And I don't think the camera's picking this up because I have horrible lighting, but that is spinning. I can feel it's just spinning nice and easy. So we'll get another wheel. Set. Oops. Put that in. And that too, I can feel. You do this, you feel the, the vibration of the spin. So that's nice and free. So 
we just put the screw back in. Get our handy dandy screwdriver. Tighten her down. And boom. Can I get if I can get a little better light? And you got your metal wheel. Here's your plastic back here. And you have your metal wheels. And we'd go on and do the same for the back ones. And I've also got to do the coal car. And the uh, caboose has some good weight, and the boxer does already. But this one is a little light. And what's like I said, what's nice with the Walters is they're pretty heavy set because they have the metal axle. So I really like those. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about my view on couplers. Okay, now I have some couplers on my scale. And the reason I use a scale is because it's white and hopefully it'll show things better than if it was a darker surface. Now you're all familiar with the classic horn hook coupler. Most guys change them out. Some people actually like them and still use them. Uh, if you like them, that's fine. They're not really realistic looking and they don't perform as well as a, a Katie or Katie style coupler. But anyways, uh, I personally have spent a small fortune trying to change out these things because uh, at this point I have somewhere over 1,300 cars. And uh, so I just want to discuss how I or what my idea is of changing out the couplers. Um, one thing I do get rid of, well, I wouldn't say get rid of, but I don't use, is the Katie style. They have that little plastic, you can see my fingertip. Let's see if I can do this. Right there, that little sliver of plastic is a plastic spring. And as you can see, they bend and look at, it doesn't go back. It should be like here. Those I do not use. I put them in a bag and I think someday I'll just put the bag on a table at a train show and mark it free. Let somebody take them if they want to mess with them. But the plastic ones that I do keep have the actual spring. Let's see if I can see there. It has that spring. And as you see, it works. But these don't have a lot of strength. Being plastic, they'll flex. What I save those for is like maintenance away vehicles or um, rail cars that are, are specialized that don't aren't going to go on a long train. They'll have a lot of stress on them. For example, this Walters logging train. It has plastic couplers on it, but it does have real springs. So I just leave them on there. And the reason for that is it saves money because like I said, I have a huge amount of train cars and converting them over has cost a fortune. So for the time being to get everything up to, you know, Katie style standards, I leave the uh, plastic springs on the specialty cars. Now if it's like a box car or a coal car, that's gonna be a long string, definitely go with metal couplers. And two styles of couplers I keep on hand, or try to keep on hand at all times, is the Katie 148 with a whisker. You can see those fine little wires right there. They seem to work in modern cars much better, I find, than the old number fives, because they're a little thinner profile right here on the shaft and it goes into the coupler socket. But I do keep a lot of the classic Katie number fives on hand with a little teeny spring that would go inside the coupler pocket. I find the older cars tend to have bigger pockets and just having that little bit more material with a spring in the shaft of this seem to you know fit in better and you'll get the up and down play. And another thing you can't live without is a KD height gauge. And this goes on your track like I said, pretty much everyone knows this, but you'd use this, you'd put a coupler in a car, you put it on the track, 
and you want to see if it's too high, too low, if you got to adjust. And also this plate here tells you where this pin, whether it needs to be bent up or down, if you use the pin for, you know, there's you know, magnets on the track you can use. So those are things I use. I hope you found this uh, helpful. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Uh, I just want to say also with metal wheels, uh, I just don't go exclusively with any with any brand. Like I said, I like the Walters metal axles, but I use KD, uh, Intermountain, Bachman, whoever's hands I can get my I can get at the time. You know, I walk into a hobby shop. Is that the brand they got? I get it. And how I decide which cars get metal wheels first? Well, Nickel Plate Road is my favorite railroad, so all my nickel plate cars have metal wheels. And if, and if I get a new one, it gets a pair of metal wheels. What I also do is I go by um, usually a style of car. So I have a collection of modern auto racks. They all got metal wheels. Um, the Christmas cars I've got that I just that we just saw. It's a small collection, so they all get metal wheels. This way, I find it easier to keep track of what has metal wheels. Luckily, most modern cars you buy today have metal wheels. But once again, that's going to be quite the undertaking, converting everything to metal wheels. And it has resulted in one problem I don't have the answer for. And that, what the heck do I do with all these plastic wheels? There's literally hundreds in here. 33 inch, uh, 36 inch, and 28 inch. So, I gotta figure out what to do with this. But, I'll think of something. Alright, thanks for watching. Take care.